the great debate of exigence and how it got pushed aside by ecologies. Rhetoric sure seems to be a lot about meaning. Speakers will get on a stage to tell us why it causes meaningful, and songwriters might write lyrics full of rhetoric to show us the significance of something, something like love. A fancy word for meaning is exigence. There's two people who differ on this topic of exigence greatly. So who's these two guys? One is Bitzer, one is Bats. They're in a bit of a debate about where exigence exactly comes from. See, Bitzer believes that exigence is inherent to situations, people, and things. In other words, things are meaningful in and of themselves. Therefore, rhetoricians see exigence in the world and respond to it, attempting to reflect it. Bats, on the other hand, sees things a little differently. Bats thinks that exigence is not inherent to situations, people, and things, but believes that we give things their meaning through our perceptions. Therefore, meaning is created, not reflected by writers. So now watch this video. It's called Save Pandas, Not Whales. Hope you liked the video. This is the Bitzer panda bear. This panda bear says saving endangered species is important. But what if this thought had never crossed anyone's mind and nobody saw it as important? Might it still be inherently and objectively more important? Bitzer would say, yes, it's definitely a possibility inherently and objectively more important. This, on the other hand, is the Vats panda bear. Vats would say that the statement saving pandas is more important than saving whales is not objectively more important in and of itself. It's not even important until someone deems it as such. The meaning of importance is created by the rudder. So what is important to one person might be trivial to another person, and neither person is objectively right or wrong. But there is one more person to be introduced, and this is Jenny Edbauer. She tends to think the argument between Bitzer and Vats is silly and would rather talk about ecologies. Ed Bauer says it is possible to situate the exigence's evocation within a wider context of effective ecologies compromised of material experiences and public feelings. Exigence equals ecologies, which is material experiences and public feelings. An ecology is basically like a big blender spiderweb of things that interact with one another. Think about how every thread forms one spiderweb. In the same way, Ed Bauer says that many things, such as material experiences and public feelings, come together to make an exigence. She says, the exigence is more like a complex of various audience speaker perceptions and institutional or material constraints. Ed Bauer says the exigence doesn't exist in and of itself, but it exists within a network or amalgamation of processes and encounter. Everything is so complex with Ed Bauer because our perceptions can be shaped differently depending on so many things, like culture, our neighbors, or even situations that surround us. So with the topic of saving pandas, Ed Bauer believes that saving pandas being important is not important because of the situation itself, but because of the effective and embodied experiences that circulate such as feelings of compassion towards pandas. So what have we learned? Bitzer, he's the guy who thinks that exigence is out there objectively, and people perceive that exigence and then attempt to reflect it. That's, he's the guy who says that objective exigences, exigence does not exist, and we create our own exigence for everything around us. Ed Bauer, she's a lot like Bats in that she thinks there's no objective exigence, but she's also different because she turns the focus to rhetorical ecologies to show how exigence is created by a big blend of things. Where does the argument stand today? Ed Bauer is definitely the most recent of the bunch, along with most widely accepted from what I could tell from the media. People seem to like her philosophy, which is a lot like that of Vat's philosophy, because it gives them the power to create exigence with their own perceptions and feelings. So then something as simple as finding out what breakfast food tastes the best could have a lot of exigence if you wanted to. Personal opinions? Most objects have meaning because we have ascribed meaning to them. This goes along with Vat's and Ed Bauer's way of thinking. But beyond this, many people have given a similar meaning to the same object, so there seems to be a possible connection to a true or constant meaning, which might be what Bitzer was on about. But again, there may be no way for tell but again, there may be no way to tell for sure. And that is the end. I hope you liked it. Created using Powtoon.